Hello, this is Father Randy Sly with another installment of Day by Day, where each day we take a look at a reading from Holy Scripture found in the Daily Mass. And today is Friday of the 30th week in Ordinary Time. But today is also the Solemnity of All Saints. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he had sat down, his disciples came to him. He began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the land. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the clean of heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they insult you and persecute you and utter every kind of evil against you falsely because of me. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward will be great in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, today, as I said, is the, the Solemnity of All Saints. And, of course, November, we're beginning today with the first of November to actually participate in a month of remembrance, remembering both those who have uh, gone before us uh, into uh, heaven and those who are still in purgatory. And so today we're talking about the saints in heaven, and tomorrow on All Souls Day, we are especially thinking about the souls that are being purified for their, their eternal destiny with God in heaven. And that's the beautiful thing about even thinking about our time of purification is that we know our destiny is sure and we can be encouraged at that point to continue to follow him. Now, what about all saints? Now, in the church, we have saints that are recognized by being what is called canonized. Canonized saints are those individuals who have met certain criteria and have been uh, established by the church as souls that have gone to heaven. And they are there, of course, with the, uh, the, the power to intercede for us in very, very unique ways since they are so close to the throne of God. So today we remember all of the saints in heaven, those that are canonized and those that we do not know about. Because as uh, we journey into eternity and if we do end up in purgatory, then at some point after our time of purification, we will go into heaven. Now, this then is a day for them. Or is it? I mean, is that something that they really celebrate? They have already received what is called the beatific vision. They are in the presence of God for all eternity. They are in the heavenly dwelling places. And so uh, they are, are fully satisfied in everything that they could ever want or have, for they are in the presence of God. I would have to suggest that, in a sense, All Saints Day is really for us, that it's a day when we are reminded that we, too, are called to be saints, that saints uh, are not just those that are canonized, not those that have just gone before us, but saints are, are those individuals that we, too, can join here on earth as we continue our journey of faith uh, in the Lord. And so we are all called to be saints, called to be holy ones, sacred ones, as that word means. Uh, and it is a description of those, of course, who have finally reached their heavenly destination. And perhaps we will never be given a, a title of saint here on earth, but all of us can aspire to that heavenly dwelling place. And that, that comes in particular as we embrace 
the cross of Jesus Christ as our redemption, that we trust in him. We are not beginning our journey as a saint trusting in the fact that we can ever be good enough, but rather that we have been given a grace by God, a gift by God. As the scripture says in John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son to the end that all that believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. He first loved us, sent his son for us, and we have received that gift of grace, of forgiveness, and of transformation of our lives. But then we continue to aspire toward our heavenly destination by living for him each day that we continue to appropriate that gift and grace. So to uh, live as a saint, to aspire to sainthood, is living out what uh, the church calls that universal call to holiness. In other words, we are called each day to continue to live out our lives in thanksgiving to God and trusting upon his grace to give us that strength to live above the sins and the temptations of the world. Now, one of the things about uh, wanting to live as a saint is sometimes we need a little boost or a checkup or something that we can look at as uh, stepping stones to help us to grow in our faith. And here in the Sermon on the Mount, we've got just that. We uh, Today, for our scripture, covered what is called the Beatitudes. I like to call them the B attitudes. These are attitudes that we need to have as followers of Jesus Christ that will, in fact, give us that understanding, that hope, and the reality that we, too, can have everlasting life. One of the things about the Beatitudes, they begin each line, each verse, with the same, same word, blessed or blessed. It's a word in the Greek, makarios, which means to be fully satisfied. In other words, to be fully satisfied by God. And so these Beatitudes are ways in which we can find ourselves completely satisfied as we live out our relationship with God. And makarios, or blessed, uh, is more than happy. There is one translation of Scripture that says, happy are the poor in spirit. Well, It's more than just happy. It's having a blissful joy. It's tremendously fulfilling beyond just a feeling, but an inner witness of joy in our hearts. So it starts out, blessed are the poor in spirit. Well, how can that work? Well, the poor in spirit, it's not talking about living in poverty. uh, And you can actually be poor in spirit, living in poverty or living in wealth because Blessed are the poor in spirit is talking about the fact that we recognize that in and of ourselves, we do not have the capability of achieving sanctification, salvation, eternity in heaven, all of that. That we fall, you know, all have sinned, as the scripture says, and fall short of the glory of God. But it says, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of God. Why is that? When we recognize that it is totally outside of our control, we are beginning our journey to heaven because we recognize the fact that we need a Savior, Jesus Christ. And then it goes on, blessed are they who mourn. And in other words, you see your poverty in spirit that you cannot do it, so you mourn the fact that you do not have it within yourself. And then, blessed are the meek. And the word meek, and many of you have heard me talk about this, means power under control. It's an, a virtue where you're never angry at the right to, a wrong time, and you're always angry at the right time. And uh, so Jesus was angry at the temple with those that were des- desecrating uh, the temple of, of God. But he was not angry when he was being crucified. He said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. So blessed are the meek. Meekness is that ability to take and surrender ourselves to God. And in that surrendering, we find ourselves being rebuilt by him, by his grace and his love and his strength. I can't go into all of the different stair steps, but all of these have wonderful ways in which they can help us to aspire to sainthood. 
that we want to hunger and thirst after righteousness. We want to be merciful. We want to be clean of heart. We want to be peacemakers. We recognize and accept the fact that we could be persecuted. All of these things are a part of our blessed life, our blessed life, when we trust in our Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior, our Redeemer, and the one who has sent the Holy Spirit to give us the grace and strength to keep living for him each day. So may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts together be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Just a reminder, too, that this is a, a holy day of obligation. Let me say that I like to call it a holy day of opportunity, a day when uh, we are uh, to go to our time of worship at Mass to worship, celebrate, and receive the grace that we have through the sacraments. So may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.